We've been doing a lot of groundwork. We've set up accounts, we've set defaults, but now things are gonna to start to get even a little bit more interesting. When you have a brick and mortar store, at some point before you open, you need to stock the shelves. Similarly, we need to do the same thing with Peachtree. We need to go ahead and set up the items or the services that we're going to be selling. This actually is a fairly straightforward process and we can access it by going to the Maintain menu. I'll come down to our inventory items and I'm actually going to create two different inventory items. One is actually not an inventory item, it's a service, but we still enter it here. And the second will be a product that we actually do sell. I'm not going to type item ID. I'm gonna go ahead and click on description because I wanna show you something. I'm going to make this a full facial. Then I'm going to press tab. Because I did not enter the item ID and because I had some things set up, we notice that something happens. The item ID comes up as full facial. It basically copies the description. This is something that we were able to set up under our general options. You can turn it off if you don't like it. Now, sometimes you don't want it to be the full thing because sometimes the description is longer than you want to see, or sometimes you actually have product numbers that you prefer to use as the ID instead. For now, we'll go ahead and leave this the way it is and move over to the right-hand side of the screen where we get to see the item class. There's a drop down here, so I'll click on it. We can have items that we do stock items that we can order, but we don't normally stock them. We can create things that have a description only, which can be useful for making comments and notes on invoices. We can have services. We can have labor items. For example, if you were a attorney and you had only labor, but not necessarily any product that you were selling, or maybe you were a gardener or a lawn maintenance company. And lastly, we have something called an assembly, which we'll talk about a little bit later. This actually is a service, so I'll make that selection. For these items, you always know if they are active or inactive, like everything else in Peachtree, once we have some transactions based on it, we can't delete it, but we could make it inactive. When I have products that I no longer sell, for example. There's also a check mark that says, do we want this to be subject to commission? If I pay my sales staff on different things that they sell, then I would want to check this box so it could be calculated as part of their payroll. Now we'll move down to the first tab that we have, which is the general tab, and we have the option to put in a description. I'll put in the description for sales. It's a full facial with scalp massage. The description is what will show up on your invoices. So you want to make it descriptive, you want to make it grammatically correct with no typos, and it will also provide the opportunity for you not to have to enter it each time you make a sale, as well as making sure it shows up consistently on each of your invoices. I'm going to press tab, which moves us down to the price for level one. I am only using one price level in this particular example, but I'll go ahead and enter that here as $85. If I were working with price levels, I could go ahead and click the little arrow to the right. This shows us our pricing levels that are available in Peachtree, and you can see that we can have levels one through five. While we can enter prices in the Pro version, remember that the Pro version does not offer us the opportunity to use calculations in order to update prices. So that is a limitation. Again, I'm not actually using this, so I'm gonna say cancel and I'll move down to my next field, which is last unit cost. This will ultimately be calculated based on our type of costing method and what we've ordered and how much it cost us. But to start, I'm gonna say that there's a last unit cost of zero. Why? Because this isn't a product, this is actually a service. So really there isn't a unit cost, or at least not one that we're going to enter. If you wanted to get tricky with some very heavy accounting and you wanted to put in things like overhead and labor, you could do that. I'm gonna keep it simple. On the right hand side, we have the accounts that are going to be working in the background when we sell this account and when we pay people for it, as well as our cost of sales account. Right now, this is being attributed to the sales of hair services, but this isn't a hair service. So I'm going to click and I'm going to do this a little bit differently. I could click the magnifying glass to display my list, or I could just type in a new account. I'm going to press backspace and instead of 40,000, I'm going to make this 40,100. Notice as soon as I begin to type, it displays the drop-down list, so I kind of get that anyway without having to click on it. And it shows me that it's not highlighting anything in the list. That means that right now, there is no account number 40,100 in my list. If I leave it there anyway, and I press tab, you'll see that it flashes for just a second, telling me this is a new item. 
I can continue to work with adding this item, but when I go to save it, I'm going to be prompted to create the sales account for 40100 That's really nice because it doesn't mean I have to worry about setting all of this stuff up ahead of time. It makes it really easy. Well, I'm going to press Shift tab, and I'm actually going to choose an account that does exist. When I change this from 40100 you'll see on the right that it changed from undefined account to showing me my list, showing me that 40300 does exist. It's the sale of aesthetic services. And when I press tab, that undefined account actually shows me the appropriate account. So all of this works very well, and it's a great way to kind of keep an eye on making sure that you're creating the right accounts or to even create new accounts on the fly. We would continue to do the same thing for the other entries until we get down to the tax item. The default item is always going to be number one, and that was set up in your defaults. For me, that's actually a sales tax item. For me, my number two is exempt from sales tax. You can work with these, of course, to be whatever is appropriate for the type of business that you do. At the bottom, we have information for a UPC or a SKU number. We can work with different types of items, locations, even stocking information. On the right-hand side, there's also a place for a preferred vendor ID. But since this is a service, none of this is really appropriate, so I'm going to leave it blank. We do have additional tabs. Everything is from the General tab. We could work with Custom Fields. We also could look at the History. History, of course, right now is blank because we're just creating this item. But as we make purchases and sales of the item, we'll be able to see that summarized right here. Bill of Materials is also not available because this is a service. So let me go back to the General tab and click on Save. And then I'm going to click on New to create the actual first product that we're going to sell. I'll go ahead and move down to my description. And this is going to be an herbal facial scrub. When I press Tab, as we'd expect, it actually uses that as the item ID. Well, I know that that name's a little bit long, so maybe I don't want to use Herbal Facial Scrub as the actual item ID. I'll simply click and modify it. If at any point in time you're asked to save a record, go ahead and say yes. Now I can continue to modify. And we'll just call this Herb Scrub. Very simple. Now I'm going to press tab one more time, get over to the right hand side, and this actually is an item we're going to keep in inventory, so I will leave it as the default, which is a stock item. Again, we can move down under the general tab, and we have a sales description, just like we did before. And maybe part of what I want to put in here is that it's actually a 10 ounce. Maybe we have two different sizes. What I didn't show you with the first item we created is that you have a couple of options for the description. You have a sales description, which I think is always important, but you also have a purchasing description. This is what's going to show up when you try to purchase this from a vendor. So this might include a variety of things, including their UPC or SKU or order numbers. This one will be a little bit more cryptic, but we'll put it in because we do want to order this product. Now you'll notice that my HS103 came in as red, and that's okay, because that's my spell check. It doesn't mean that there's anything wrong with it, it just means that HS103 is something it doesn't recognize as a word. I love spell check, because sometimes I get typing faster than my brain can think, and I get little typos. This will help draw my attention to it. Now we do have a little bit more information here that we need to work with, because this is a stock product item. So let me press tab. And our price level is going to be, oh, let's say $28. Then I'll press Tab. Press that twice, and we come down to Last Unit Cost. In this case, we do have a cost associated with selling this item. We're going to sell it for $28, but it actually costs us $8.13. Last Unit Cost is entered the first time here. But from this point forward, based on my costing method, Peachtree will help keep track of it based on how much I pay each time I order. So if I ordered 10 at $8.13 and then another 10 at $8.50, it would know when to adjust the cost. I think that's great because I don't have to keep track of the difficult stuff. This is where knowing first in, first out, 
last in, first out, or averaging is going to be important. Usually, with products that have an expiration date or a shelf life, you're going to want to sell the oldest ones first, or first in, first out. Again, you could have a UPC or a SKU number, item type, location, or stocking. You also can have the weight, and this is really important if you're going to be shipping products. We're not going to be doing shipping, so I won't worry about tracking that. Because this is an accounting program, on the right-hand side, we need to work with the accounts again, and we need to talk about the GL sales account, as well as the inventory account and the cost of sales account. You'll notice that right now, resale product is our GL inventory account. So when we purchase it and it's sitting in inventory, this is our COGS account. We also have our cost of goods sold. What isn't correct is our sales hair services. And this is going to be maybe the same as it was before, where we didn't want hair services, but instead we want resale products. For our actual facial, it was an aesthetic service, but this is a product, so it's going to be a little bit different. Next thing we need to do is come to the bottom right, and this is where we get some calculations going on. Peachtree is going to keep track of our quantity on hand, quantity available, purchase orders, those types of things. What we need to enter is what we want our minimum stock to be, and I'm going to say that that's going to be five units. And we want to reorder when we get to seven, that way we never get down below our five. And then we can put in a preferred vendor. Our preferred vendor is actually called Scrubs Manufacturing, but I'm going to abbreviate that because remember, this is an ID. This vendor does not exist, so when I press Tab, I get the little blinking thing. The little blinking thing, though, can be a good eye-opener to you. If you think a vendor or anybody else should exist, and when you type it in, it blinks, it probably means you have a typographical error. So take a look at that. The last thing is a buyer ID. This would actually be a person who's on my staff who is in charge of purchasing this item. Obviously, if we want to do the right kind of reporting for that, then we would need to know the buyer ID. Since I don't have a buyer ID, I'm going to leave that blank. That's pretty much it. Again, we could have custom fields and history, but none of those are appropriate. So I'm going to go back to general and I'm going to save. This time, because Scrubs Manufacturing does not exist, we're going to click on Setup and go ahead and continue that before we get done so that we can save the item and the vendor all at the same time. The vendor ID is already there because that's what I added on the previous form. All I have to do is add the real spelled out name. And once again, we have a lot of information that we can enter. I'm not going to take your time showing you all of that here. All of the contacts and account numbers and mailing addresses and things are here. An account number would be important because then that could be printed on things like purchase orders and checks. On the right-hand side, there are several things you don't want to skip. First of all, what type of vendor is this? Well, we actually don't have any vendor types created yet. But an example might be to create vendor types for those you purchase your products from that you resell versus people who are just vendors for maybe the overhead of the business like lawn care or utility companies. I'm going to create a wholesaler account. But what you'll notice is I run out of space after the SAL. There actually is a limited number of characters you can use for vendor type. So I have to get a little bit more creative here. I'm going to abbreviate wholesaler. And maybe I'll just call it wholesale. I'll press tab. The next is a 1099 type. Corporations do not receive 1099s, neither do contractors to whom you pay less than $600 a year, so this particular answer is none. We could also choose if we're providing interest, you get those from your bank all the time, or if they are an independent contractor. We'll leave none selected, and the next thing is the expense account. So what does Scrubs Manufacturing go to? Once again, we have our entire list here of things that we can purchase and accounts that we can attribute them to. Maybe this would be my resale product inventory. Telephone numbers, fax numbers, emails. Once you get this information in, you can also click this button to copy your mailing address as your remit to address as well. And down at the bottom, it shows customizable fields. Now, office manager, account rep, and special note are ones that are included automatically by Peachtree. But if you want to add your own fields for things that you need to track, you can click the link at the bottom that says customize these fields for your business. 
Just like everything else we've looked at, we also have multiple addresses, history, and even purchase information. We're going to keep it simple at the moment, and we're just going to go ahead and save this and close it. This brings us back to our Maintain Inventory Items window because that's what we were originally creating. We're going to go ahead and save this again because we did save that vendor. And then we'll close this window as well. So, even though it seems like we did an awful lot, we actually started easily. We just did Maintain Inventory Items. We were able to add services and inventory items, as well as a variety of other things. We just didn't show you examples of them. And on the fly, we were also able to add things like vendors. This all makes setting up to sell actually a very simple process, even though I was talking about a lot of the details. But it's really quick when you know your own products and your inventory. It can be done very quickly, even with large numbers of products.